Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My subject today is static retinoscopy. It's a technique by which we can determine the error of a refraction in an eye. In the old days, we used to use mirrors for that, and recent and in these days we are using the streak retinoscope. The observer sit in front of the patient with an average distance of one meter in between and the head of the observer should be at the same level of the head of the patient. Either the doctor use a streak retinoscope or he can use a plane mirror with a source of light ahead of the at a level higher than the head of the patient and light comes into the mirror and is reflected back to the patient's eye so this is the situation we get the observer here holding a mirror in his hand with a distance of one meter light comes from this source to the mirror and is reflected back to the patient's eye the light will pass through the different media of the eye till reaching the choroid. As the choroid is full of blood, it will reflect light back and this light will be red in color. The doctor will receive the light through this hole and he will see the red reflex. If this is the pupil we are seeing and we are moving the mirror from one side to the other, the red reflex will go one of three things. The red reflex may move against our movement, or may move with our movement, or may not move at all. In this situation, as we move the mirror more and more, the red reflex moves in the opposite way, and gradually the pupil will assume a dark part and the red reflex is moving away. So this is an against movement of the red reflex. Here, this is a with movement of the red reflex. The red reflex is moving as our movement and gradually it leaves, it leaves behind a dark part of the pupil. And the last situation is that the red reflex is not changing at all. There is no movement of the red reflex. In case of a streak retinoscope, the streak retinoscope is formed of a source of electricity that illuminates one lamp. This lamp emits rays that will pass through a lens. This lens will make the rays being parallel. These rays will be reflected on a mirror and it will come out of the streak parallel rays. And instead of having a diffused light, there is some barrier that allows the light only comes in a streak form and this streak form we can make it vertical or horizontal or oblique in any meridian as the light passes to the patient's eye the red reflex will be seen light will come back and it will reach to the doctor so this is the situation when we are examining with the steric retinoscope in the middle here there is no movement of the red reflex all the time the pupil is red while on this side you can see that the light inside the pupil is moving as the light outside the pupil so this is a with movement of the red reflex and here it is the opposite the light moves in one direction again is the movement of the streak we are using in case we have a width movement of the red reflex, we gradually start to put a plus lens in front of the pupil and repeat the test. We gradually increase the power of this plus lens till we reach the situation of no movement. On the other hand, if we have an against movement of the red reflex, we start to put a minus lens and gradually increase the power of this minus lens till we reach the stage of no movement of the red reflex or what we call the neutralization position. So we write down the power of the lens we use to reach this neutralization situation. 
in this example we didn't use any lens at all there was no movement of the red reflex in this example we had to use up to minus 2 at minus 2 there was no movement of the red reflex while in this example we used a plus 5 we start by plus 1 2 3 4 till we reach 5 we repeat the test once vertical once horizontal and in this example the power was the same in both directions now we let the patient go away and later when he comes back for the trial we are going to add minus 2 to these numbers and we say this is the expected power of lens that the patient should use so the first patient instead of using minus 2 he should use minus 4 the second patient we need to put him minus 2 and the last one we're going to put him plus 3 so we just simply add minus 2 to our result of retinoscopy and this is the final result that the patient should use it and we start to make a trial we let the patient sit in, in front of the chart and we start to put the lens of these powers and maybe we can increase it a little bit or reduce it a little bit till we reach the best vision the patient can achieve while you are adding minus two we add minus one for the distance of one meter and we add another minus one for the tone of the ciliary muscle if atropine was used during the examination this will be explained in a while now Imagine that this is the patient's eye and at this is where the observer is sitting and the distance in between is one meter. We illuminate the choroid and the retina at the back of the eye so rays coming from the patient's eye may come conversion at one point between the patient and the observer or rays may come convergent and exactly meet where the doctor is sitting or rays are convergent and meeting at a point behind the doctor or rays may come parallel or rays may come out of the eye divergent so this is the possibilities either rays coming out convergent to a point where the doctor is sitting or a point between the doctor and the patient or a point behind the doctor or rays may come parallel or rays may come divergent there is no other possibility than that in the first situation we're going to see the red reflex is moving against when the rays are at located at a point between the doctor and the patient when the rays are located at the doctor position exactly there will be no movement of the red reflex and the last three situations there will be a with movement of the red reflex so in this example rays are coming in and gather in a point between the doctor and the patient and the red reflex will appear against in the second example the rays are located exactly where the doctor is sitting and in this situation there will be no movement of the red reflex the three remaining situations we will end with the same result a with movement of the red reflex rays behind the doctor collecting in a point behind the doctors rays coming out parallel rays coming out divergent in all the three situations we have the same thing a with movement of the red reflex so in the first situation we start to put a minus lens when we have an against movement this minus le lens will get the rays coming from the eye slightly divergent so the focus will be a little bit nearer to the doctor but still the red reflex is moving against so we increase the power more divergence of the rays and the focus now is here still the movement is against 
more power then the rays are exactly where the doctor is located in this case there will be no movement of the red reflex in the second situation it's already no movements the neutral position is there so we are not going to add anything in this situation number three we are putting plus power this will converge the rays more now the focus is at the doctor exactly and there is no movement in this example we add one lens some conversions but still focus is behind the doctor so it is still with more power the focus is here at the doctor's location no movement of the red reflex in the last situation plus power rays are less divergent more power rays are convergent but behind the doctor more power lens rays are exactly where the doctor is locating so this is the neutral position reached so what actually we have been done for each eye we used a suitable lens and the goal is to make rays coming from this eye reach a point where the doctor is exactly sitting so that is the situation each eye is we put in front of it a lens of a suitable power but the end result the rays coming from this eye through this lens and by collecting at a location where the doctor is sitting now we have an eye an optical system and rays coming out of it and it is focused here at one meter this is where the doctor is sitting in order to correct this situation this is an eye of a myopia minus one so we are going to put a lens power of minus one to make rays coming out parallel so if we add a minus one to such a system we change the eye from being myop minus one into an emetrope this explains why we add a, a power of minus one for the distance of one meter in correction of myopia we say that myop is a strong system in the average emetropic eyes rays come parallel but the myopic eye is a strong system so rays comes conversion if we could think of myopia as an emetropic eye with an extra power so imagine we have an extra power of one diopter so rays emitting from this per em emetropic eyes are parallel into this plus one so the focus here will be at one meter so if we have a myopia that is stronger than average by one diopter the focus is at one meter or the far point of this eye is at one meter to correct this error we need to put a minus one it's a lens with a focal lens of one meter so in errors of refraction in general we are putting a lens that has a focal length coinciding with the far point of the patient so in doing retinoscopy we don't know the state of refraction of these patients but for each one we add a suitable lens once minus sometimes no power sometimes different plus lenses but all these eyes rays coming from their systems ends here at one meter that's to say all these eyes are now myope of minus one to correct them we need to add minus one for each of them so that is why we add another we add a minus one for the result of our retinoscopy the number we have recorded in the first place now imagine that instead that we are not sitting here at one meter we were sitting at 50 centimeter the doctor is sitting at 50 centimeter in front of the patients in this situation rays 
we put different lenses till the rays come here at 50 centimeters this is the neutral position so in this situation we need to add a minus 2 to correct this induced myopia if the observer was sitting at 33 centimeters so rays coming from these eyes are focused here at 33 centimeters in this situation we should have add minus 3 if the observer was sitting at 25 centimeters we should have add a minus 4 if the observer was sitting at 20 centimeters we should have add a minus 5 because we turned all these eyes of myop to myopia of minus 5. Now, notice here why we always want to stay at 1 meter, not 50, not 33, not 25 or so. If you make any minimal distance change here, suppose you thought that you were sitting at 25 but actually you are at 20 you get an error of 5 of 1 diopter so 5 centimeters distance difference in the distance here will result in a difference of 1 diopter here an error of 1 diopter will appear if you miscalculate the distance by 8 here you get an error of one diopter if you miscalculate the distance by 17 centimeters here you get a difference of 50 centimeters error 50 centimeter miscalculation for the of the distance to get one error diopter so if you are sitting if you are sitting and uh, not only at 100 it's at 95 the margin of error is very minimal if you add 1 at 95 you di you will not get much difference but if you get a difference here of cent of 5 centimeters you're going to end with a difference in your addition by 1 that's why we prefer to stay here away from the patient's eye because any change in the distance the exact distance will not affect our judgment Now the second one is the add the another one of the minus two, the first one for the distance of one meter. The other one, if we were using atropine, atropine should cancel the tone of the serial muscle. Later when the effect of atropine is lost, this tone will be in action again. So we should remove this effect of tone. So if we made our calculation with the tone abolished and later the tone is back, we have to omit this extra power appeared by adding another minus one why it's minus one because on the average the tone of the ciliary muscle is one diopter now another point why the direction of the movement of the red reflex varies with the error of refraction now if this is the sort of light reflecting to the mirror and we are projecting the mirror up we are illuminating this part of the retina the upper part of the retina if we gradually ch change the movement of the mirror from up to down then gradually we are going to illuminate the middle part of the retina then the lower part of the retina so this is the direction of our movement from up to down and also we are illuminating the retina first in the upper part of the fundus then middle and lastly in the lower part of the fundus imagine that this eye the rays come is coming out of this eye in a parallel fashion when we illuminate the upper part rays coming out parallel when illuminate and we are going to receive this rays so we are going to see it the observer is here the observer will project the rays and he will notice that the red the light is coming from up when we move our hands to illuminate the middle part rays coming parallel and the observer will receive these rays and will project them back and he will feel that the 
illumination is coming from here when light is coming from the bottom rays coming parallel observer will notice that the light is coming from here so this is the direction of our movement from up to down and this what the observer will notice he will notice also that the red reflex is moving from up to down so the movement of the red reflex goes the same way as the movement of our hand from up to down this is the situation if we have feral rays coming out of the eye now if we have a divergent rays coming out of the eye it will be the same as before with the parallel rays this is the first situation rays are divergent observer notice them project them back in the middle project them back at the bottom project them back so this is the direction of the movement of the mirror and this is the direction of the movement of the red reflex they are moving hand in hand now let's see this example with conversion rays when we are illuminating the upper part suppose this is a very high power eye so rays come very convergent to a point here between the observer the observer and the patient so we are illuminating the upper part of the retina and we get rays focused here so the observer will notice that the light is here a real image is formed here when light is a little bit down here rays will form an image here when light comes to the bottom an image will be formed here so this is the direction of our movement as in the examples before but this what will the observer will see the observer will see illumination down first then up so the movement of the mirror in one direction but the movement of the red reflex will be in the opposite direction now another example where convergent rays reach exactly where the observer is so this is the first situation the right the rays reach to the observer when we come a little bit down again rays reach to the observer when we go to the bottom rays reach to the observer so although there is a movement here all the time the observer reach receive some rays so all the time there is a red reflex there is no movement of the red reflex the last situation if you have a convergent rays and rays are focused behind the observer so rays getting into ob the observer are not focused to form an image the something some rays coming the image will be here but here there is just rays so the observer will project the rays back so he will feel that rays are coming from here up again rays not an image so observer will project them back and to the bottom observer will project them back so this is the direction of the movement of the mirror and this is the direction of the red reflex so this part will show us why if the rays coming from the eye is between the patient and the doctor the doctor will see the red reflex moves against if the rays coming from the eye is located at the doctor exactly there will be no movement of the red reflex and the remaining three situations there will be a with movement of the red reflex now what about the speed of movement of the red reflex the speed of movement of the red reflex varies with the error of refraction in higher degrees of error the red refle reflex appears dim and it moves slowly while in low 
errors of refraction, the red reflex appears bright and it moves rapidly. Now, let's see this example. Imagine that we have a patient here with high degree of myopia, say minus 10. So rays coming from the eye will come to a focus here 10 centimeters and then the observer is here at 100 centimeters. So rays are coming focused here then the, it will divert to reach to the observer. If you are illuminating point 1 image will be formed here. If we uh, go down to illuminate point 2 image will appear here. In the lower part, this is an example of a patient with, say, myopia one and a half. So rays are coming from the eye, will come to a focus here, say, at around 75 centimeters, just 25 centimeters before the observer. When we illuminate point one, this uh, the image will be formed here. When you illuminate point two, the image will be here then the rays will diverge to reach to the observer. Now I want you to notice the, this distance that the image has to run over a fixed time. We move from point 1 to point 2 at the same speed in the upper and the lower figure, but here this distance is short and this distance is long. So in order to finish passing this distance in the same time the speed should be higher that's why in high in small errors the speed is quite rapid while in higher errors the speed is slow as regard the dimness or the brightness of light in this situation we get here the observer receiving part of the rays rays are come are coming into focus here then they will diverge and on reaching to the observer only part of this bundle will get into the pupil of the observer so the red reflex is them while in this situation the focus is just close to the observer and although lights are diverging but what they are just starting to diverge but the pupil of the observer will capture all these rays so most of this bundle will get inside the pupil that's why the observer will see the red reflex bright so in high errors the red reflex moves slowly and it is dim and in, in small errors the red reflex is bright and it moves rapidly this is the eye with rays coming to a focus here then diversion if your pupil is here, you are gathering the whole rays, then the red reflex is very bright. But imagine that you are sitting here and rays are focused here, then start to diverge. So the part of rays that will reach to the pupil will be only part of the whole, so the red reflex will be dim. Now, a method to check your endpoint to be sure that the lens you are using is the correct one, we need to do the verification of your neutral position. Now, see, this is where the endpoint rays coming from the eye reach to the observer, and the red reflex is no movement. Imagine that you just simply moves a little bit forward. At this situation, the rays coming from this eye is behind the observer, so the red reflex will be with. And the reverse is true. If you move a little bit away, now the focus is between the observer and the, do and the patient, and in this situation, the red reflex is against. So one of the things that you can do to check yourself is to lean a little bit forward or a little bit backward and this should change the movement of the red reflex. So if that is the case, then you know exactly that you have reached the end point. Another way, if you notice here, we get a width movement of the red reflex. 
we start to put a plus lens increasing its power till there is no movement if we add more plus lens then the focus will be between the observer and the patient and there will be against movement in this situation we put minus lenses gradually increasing the power till no movement this is the neutral position if you put another minus the focus will, will be behind and there will be a wave movement so we can also check ourselves by adding more power lenses and see that the red reflex is reversed to what we have seen before now the all we have explained we, is the movement of the red reflex when we are using a plane mirror but if we change the situation into convex or concave mirror things will be different this is the, the configuration of an image when we are using a convex mirror or when we are using a plane mirror rays from the object will be reflected back and if we extend these rays we will find a virtual image behind the mirror we all, that we all know that if you stand in your dressing room in front of the mirror you will see an image of you behind the mirror this is the case with the plane mirror and also this is the case with the convex mirror on the other hand in cases of concave mirror a real image is formed at the concavity of this mirror for example if you see the lamp of cars the the cars we we have a concave metal part and here we get the lamp rays coming from this lamp are reflected through this concave part so rays come out parallel to illuminate our road so the action of a concave mirror that if we get parallel rays into this concave mirror rays will be reflected here at the focus of that mirror so whenever we are using a concave mirror a real image is formed at the concavity of this mirror so convex and plane mirror we have a virtual image behind but in case of concave mirror we have a real image ahead in of that mirror So we have here a virtual image behind the mirror this is convex or para or flat mirror but in concave mirror we get a real mirror a real image in front of the mirror now imagine that we are using a mirror a plane mirror or convex mirror if you are di if you are directing the mirror up the image is down if you move your mirror to be directed down the image is up so if I'm examining a patient I'm putting the source of light here I'm illuminating the upper part of the retina and gradually the source of light is up so I'm illuminating the lower part of the retina this is the direction of my movement in case of concave mirror the image is in front here so if I'm directing the mirror up this is the source of illumination is up and when we change the mirror into a down direction the source of illumination is down so when the source of illumination is up we actually are illuminating the lower part of the retina and when the source of illumination is down as if we are illuminating the upper part of the retina so here we start by illuminating the upper part of the retina and ending with the lower part of the retina although here we are start by illuminating the lower part of the retina and ending with the upper part of the retina that's why whenever we are using plane mirror or convex mirror we get the same movements the ones we have just described while in concave mirror everything is reversed so this is the regular if the movement if is move if the movement of the red reflex is against we use minus lenses but should be reversed here if we were using a concave lens
a concave mirror in this situation we have to use instead minus lenses we have to use a plus lens for correction again this is another drawing to show the same thing this is the plane mirror and the image is behind the plane mirror is directed up now it's directed down so in the first situation the image the source of light was behind down and now it's up so here we are eliminating the upper part of the retina of the patient and now we move to the lower part while in concave mirror the source of image is in front this real image so when we are facing the mirror is facing up now it's facing down the image move from here to there in this, sit this situation rays come to the eye of the patient to illuminate the lower part and in the second situation the illumination will go to the upper part so it's the reverse the streak retinoscope as we've said is formed of these parts and we can change this mirror to be a plane or concave or convex by moving this lens a little bit up or down if we move a lens closer to the source of light or away from the source of light we can change this mirror to be concave or convex to understand this this is a source of light and rays coming out of this source are divergent now if this is a lens if we put it in position 1 then gradually we push it away to position 4 so at one time the lens was here now it's in position 2 position 3 position 4 notice here in position 4 the rays getting through this lens are slightly divergent in position 3 the rays getting inside the lens are more divergent here position 2 rays getting inside the lens more and more divergent here the highest divergence of the rays get reach into inside this lens this that's to say if the object is close to the lens the amount of rays getting into the lens are highly divergent but if the object is away from the lens the rays coming from this object re reaching through this lens are slightly divergent now we all remember this law if we have an object here and rays coming from this object through this lens this lens will these rays are divergent and this is a convergent ray this will bring the rays to this focus and we say that the initial versions plus the power of the lens equals the final versions a big U this is the initial versions plus the power of the lens equals the final versions now if the object is at the focus of the lens so the amount of divergence here exactly equals to the power of the lens so the end result will be parallel rays if you move the object away from the lens rays reaching to the lens are slightly divergent so this same lens has the ability to bring rays to a focus in the third situation we if we bring the object closer and closer to the lens so the rays are very very divergent this lens will try to bring it into a convergent situation but its power is not enough so rays coming out here slightly divergent so in this situation u it's divergent rays with the minus and f it's a with the plus if u equals f then this will be zero the rays will be parallel 
but here, here this is the situation the divergence equal the power the divergence is zero the final version here the divergence is slight and the power is high so there is a conversion here the divergence is very high and the power is not enough so the ver the final version is well with the minus it's a diversion so this is the case this is the average size where the distance equal the this divergence equal to the converging power of the lens if we bring it away then the end result will be conversion if we get it closer the end result will be diversion so this is the situation this is the average power with parallel rays but if you get a lens closer or if you get the lens away from the source of light you can change the rays coming from the mirror from parallel into conversion rays or divergent rays the movement of the red reflex, the rapidity of movement of the movement of the red reflex depends on the rapidity of movement of the mirror we are using. It depends on the distance between the mirror and source of light. This is in case when we were using mirrors in the past. It depends on the distance between the doctor and the patient and it depends on the error of refraction. There is a very nice simulator on this side. I can you can go and visit the site and see for yourself the movement of the red reflex I can show an example here say you get myopia say myopia of minus 2 now if you make the movement it's again it's movement then you start to choose minus lens this is minus quadrant still against minus three quadrant minus one minus one there is no movement of the red reflex because we are setting one meter so minus one we add another minus one so the end result will be minus two that's why this is the neutral position you can go for yourself and try all these things we have myopia with different degrees the hypermetropia and shoot choose different lenses and see for yourself the movement of the red reflex this is the site of this simulator so you notice that if here we are the observer if we are far away from the neutral position the red reflex will appear narrow and if we are correcting the patients more and more and the neutral position is approaching the red reflex will start to be wide and when the neutral position is there the red reflex will fill the whole pupil Sometimes when you use the steric retinoscope, you notice that the red reflex is inside the pupil is not in the same line as the steric retinoscope. So there is a break between the red reflex light and the streak light. If you try to make the movement, although you are moving in one direction like this, the red reflex itself keep th its own direction. So in this situation, you need to change the axis of your streak so that it should ride on the what you see in the pupil so in this situation your streak is like that you need to r change it to be exactly vertical to move at that what you see inside the pupil thank you for your attention